Hi everybody, it's Drew with Greenhouse Megastore and today I'm in my garden and we're going to walk you through how to set up a very simple drip irrigation system. So the first question you might be asking yourself is why do you need an irrigation system? And that's a very good question. An irrigation system is one of the best ways that you can ensure that your plants stay healthy and if they're healthy they can avoid pest pressure, weed pressure, and other sorts of problems that you have in the garden. An irrigation system is going to deliver the right amount of water to the soil and the soil is really how the plants Eat. that's where their nutrition comes from and so that's the best place to put the water and that's how we've designed our system uh, with some of off-the-shelf parts and we put it together to show you an easy way of doing this when our irrigation kit arrives the first thing you'll need to do is determine the location you're going to put it in and how you're going to install it and then once you have that you can start putting some of the pieces together there are a couple of ways that our system can go together I'll talk about one primarily and then I'll give you some pointers on the other way that you might want to do it. Okay, so first we'll uh, go through some of the most important parts and we'll assemble them here uh, just very loosely so you can get an idea of how they go together. The first part is this brass hose adapter. Uh, this is hose threads on one end and regular three-quarter inch threads on the other end uh, because for some reason they're different and you can't take three-quarter inch threads and thread it onto a, a hose or a hose bib. It just doesn't work. So this would, your hose, or you could put it on a, on a hose bib or a faucet uh, directly. Either way is fine. Uh, but the hose would run to this and this would screw on the end. The next important piece is a filter. So this is a 120 mesh micron filter. Uh, if you're on city water, this isn't probably required too much, but it's just a way of keeping the uh, particulates out of the water. And if you have too many of those, the drippers on the drip line will clog. You attach the hose fitting onto the, the filter and then the hose attaches here and then just sort of lays on the ground. Uh, a better way is to, to mount this up off the ground uh, but not everyone might have that option available to them, so it just sort of depends. Next part is the pressure regulator, and this is super important because these systems are designed to operate at a specific pressure, and if you are not operating at that pressure, it won't be as efficient. So when I first installed my system, I had the wrong pressure regulator. It was too high of a pressure and my lines were bursting. So this one is sized appropriately for the system. This pressure regulator is calibrated to 15 PSI, which is the pressure that the system needs to operate at. And uh, it's an inline regulator. It's very simple. It just screws right on to the filter, and then you have this sort of assembly. I should also make note of both the filter and the regulator that they are directional. On both of them there are arrows that show which way the water flow should be. So you definitely want to make sure that when you attach everything that the water is flowing with the arrows. Those need to be attached in such a way that the arrows match the directional flow of the water. On all of the threads you're going to want to use white Teflon tape. This helps the, the attachments from dripping. Then the final piece, uh, which is a specialized piece, so this is something that you have to have, is this threaded to barbed end piece. Uh, and this just is going to thread directly into the regulator, like this. And it's barbed so that our poly tubing can just slide on the end there. Now, it's not quite as simple as just this poly tubing sliding on the end. You actually have to heat this up. A uh, hair dryer is probably the best way to do it, if that's possible, and then uh, use some dish soap on this fitting. And it does take quite a lot of force to get those on there. Uh, and you may also consider a hose clamp at this fitting too, or else they might drip. Uh, but then once this is all installed like this, you're pretty much ready to go uh, in installing your drip lines. So there is an alternative way of doing this, and that's instead of using the hose to run the water to your garden, uh, you can fit the brass fitting directly onto a faucet, and then use the uh, threaded to barbed adapter and just thread that directly in there. And then 
just put poly tubing directly on there and you can run the poly tubing as far as you need to uh, all the way out to your garden and uh, this is the way I've done it in my garden that way I can keep all of the fittings up off the ground they're mounted to the side of, uh, of my garage uh, so this is a way of doing it and then on the other end so then the the difference uh, for that configuration is going to be on the filter you're using a three-quarter inch threaded couple that we are sending uh, and then into that you can thread the three-quarter inch to barbed fitting and that then completes that setup. The thing you'll want to remember is anytime you're transitioning uh, from a hose or something that's threaded to poly tubing you'll need one of these it's required so we're going to send a couple of these with the kit if you need more if there's more transitions that you're doing you'll need to order more separately. So now I'm going to show you the example of how I put together my system that I'm actually using in my garden. So here we have, uh, this is a separate manifold that I purchased. So after that, these are all just regular hose fittings. So you can see here I have the brass fitting threaded on to the hose fitting. And then the 3 quarter inch to 60 millimeter barb fitting is threaded just directly into that. I have a little bit of a drip because these are actually old fittings. Um, and a little drip like that is not that big of a deal. Uh, then the poly tubing is threaded on here. You may consider a hose clamp at every one of these connections, but I found that they don't really leak uh, that much, so it's not that big of a deal. And then this poly tubing actually runs about 50 feet over to my garden, uh, which is not all that important to know. It's just uh, you can put any distance between your actual hose faucet and your garden. Here I am on the side of my garage where I've installed the filter and the regulator and everything and I just wanted to show that setup because it's a variation of some of the ways I have shown to set it up. So here is, uh, I have, I've installed a T uh, because uh, this direction here that goes to a hose bib uh, that I installed inside the garage which is useful for hand watering separately from the irrigation system uh, so if the irrigation system is off I can still use the hose that's very nice uh, but basically you can just see that the poly tubing goes to the barbed fitting to the three-quarter coupling into the uh, filter pressure regulator and then I chose to install a hose bib out of the pressure regulator so that I can install the timer right onto it. And really that's up to you. The timer can be put anywhere. I put it here so that the irrigation system could run independently of any other watering that I was doing or using. Uh, and then from there, uh, this is just a, a hose fitting on the bottom and it runs to the garden. So you can see I'm using a little more of the three quarter inch to 60 millimeter barb fittings. Uh, I'm using a three quarter coupling. I'm using a few of the brass hose adapters. So when you design your system, account for those extra parts depending on how you want to install it. So then that brings us to the installation of the drip lines themselves. Those are the lines that are actually going to drip water into your garden beds. These are just 16 millimeter barbed fittings. We will send a few 90 degrees and then we'll send some T's as well. Uh, the reason for that is that at every point you put a drip line, you'll need to install a T so that the water line, your poly tubing, can run through and feed all the all the rest of the drip lines. And so, for instance, let's assume this is the line running water to your garden. Uh, you would need to press it in like this. I'm not going to do it because it's actually very difficult to do. Uh, and then your drip line assembly would go in like this. Assuming this was a T, then the water would continue to flow through and feed all the remainder of the drip lines. 
then once you transition to the drip line, everything becomes a, uh, much easier because the fittings for the drip lines are easier to work with. So this is just a twist lock uh, installation method and it's very simple. This comes with an integrated shut off valve so you can actually shut off each individual line. Super handy for working on repairs and things like that. Uh, this end is barbed and it's really simple. You just press the drip tape onto it and you screw the collar down and that makes a watertight secure connection with no extra tools required. And the drip tape, I'm not sure if you can see, has these emitters and that's actually what's going to drip. The ones that we send are sized about half a gallon per minute, uh, which would require about an hour's worth of watering per day, maybe a little more. Uh, we also are going to send some couplings, twist lock couplings. These are nice if you get a burst or if you poke, poke a hole in the drip line. You can just cut out the ruptured section and uh, it's just twist lock fittings on each end. So the, the drip tape slides on and the collar slides down. And then the final piece are the ends, which are really required. I tried a few different ways of doing uh, plugging the end so the system maintains pressure, but this is really the only way. And these are nice because it's twist lock, just like all the other ones, so no tools required, but it has this uh, loop at the end that you can actually put a stake through and that keeps the drip line from moving around as you're working in your garden. This is just an example of how you would set up a drip line actually in the garden. And so uh, this here is basically what we would call a trunk line. This feeds all of the drip lines and that's why there's a T. And then each drip line gets a short section of 16 millimeter tubing here that leads to this shutoff valve and then the twist lock fitting, and then this is the drip line. This drip tape is just thin-walled uh, polyethylene with uh, emitters in it. And so I have two drip lines per bed, three beds, six drip lines. So the only thing left now to do is to turn on the system. That's pretty much it. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments, uh, advice, how it might be better, be sure to leave a comment below. Follow us on all our social media channels. Be sure to keep a lookout for our next video and some more content coming your way. Thank you. Blah! Okay.